We didn't have audio there, sorry. We're gonna continue our exploration of chapter 21 and finish off the chapter right here. We have a prediction of products problem here. And these are new reactions. Although this one should be a review reaction from chapter eight. But it has context here as well in that we're talking about reactions at the benzylic position. What does that mean? Well, phenyl C, this is the benzylic position. Carbon attached to a benzene is a benzyl carbon. And NBS is n bromo succinamide. And we know what succin means now. It's four carbon dicarboxylic acid or a derivative. In this case, it's an imid. And it means there's a nitrogen between the two carbonyls. And it's got a bromine, n bromo succinamide. And it does the same job as Br2 and heat. It particularly is good for benzylic and allylic bromination. So if there's a hydrogen on the benzylic or allylic position, in this case there is, there's a H on that benzylic position, right there, that will be replaced by a bromine. And it's got a radical mechanism. It's a bonus mechanism from the past. You cannot do the same reaction at this benzylic position here because there's no H to take off. So you will not have a reaction at a tertiary carbon. Keep that in mind. I'll be asking about it again later. So we have the tert butyl unchanged. We have the methyl that now has a bromine on it. And then we have a review reaction from chapter nine, where I have a strong new and a polar A product solvent. And I got a primary carbon with a halogen on it. So I'm talking about FN2. So you keep all the blue. And you get this new oxygen nucleophile on here with a CH2 and then a vinyl at the end. So really it's an allylic ether. This is allylic and benzylic. Allylic, benzylic ether. That's what I have. And what happens in the next one? Wow. It looks like, bless you, if you look at um, this molecule here with the methyl on there, the CH2 here became a CH3 here. An extra H was obtained. Okay, where do we get the H from? I don't know. We had a new H on the O as well. Look, the new H on the O. New H. Well, two new H's, big clue. Two new H's and PT. One equals hydrogenolysis of benzylic ether. 
So yeah. So step one is going to give us this. We got our dude here, and he's got a CH2 that also has a new H. And the other H one here So we've can, we've made this molecule right here, tert butyl toluene, para tert butyl toluene, right? Always reviewing nomenclature. T tert butyl toluene. We've made that. Uh, we'll just give it a symbol right here and right here. What has to happen to this molecule here, this allylic alcohol to make it a, well, it's not allylic at all anymore. There's no, no, no more pi bond. But it looks like on the pi bond, I added an OH to the more substituted carbon and a halogen to the less substituted carbon. That's an oldie, but a goodie. So this first reaction is a new one. And that's chapter 21 point, whatever the heading is in this, Activity 21.5. In our second one, good old Br2 and water. Found in chapter six. Yeah, we're going way back sometime. We called it vicinal halo hydrin formation. Vicinal halo hydrin. And that's what happened to the other piece. I think that covered, oh no, we haven't done the, uh, the last chapter 21 mechanism we have to do. Again. And it has to do with the fact that if you have a benzylic H, just like you needed a benzylic H to, to brominate the benzylic position, if you have a benzylic H, at least one, then treatment with chromic acid, and I'm saying chromic acid, but I don't see chromic acid, we're supposed to understand this combination of three chemicals gives chromic acid. We've been using that for a long time. That was chapter 10, but here there's no alcohol to oxidize. There will be though during the mechanism and you don't have to know the mechanism. It's a complicated. All you have to know is as long as you have one benzylic hydrogen, one, two, or three, we got three here, you'll always get the same result. That carbon becomes a carboxylic acid under these conditions. That's it. If there's more carbons attached there, they get cut off. Whether it's a methyl, an acyl, a propyl, a isohexyl, whatever, we're gonna get the same result. You ready for the result? Here it is. We keep the carbon, then it gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Heat is needed here. You have to have the heat. It's a very high barrier of activation that we must overcome. And I think that does our activity right there. So I'll stop our video.